and welcome back to Little Red Roaming. I'm your host, Little Red, and if you've been following along, you already know what we're going to talk about today. And that is the next steps to planning and budgeting for whatever trip it is that you want to take. The trip that I'm hypothetically planning to take stops in London and then continues on to Thailand, where I'll stay for a month and then I'll return home to Boston. So I'm using this trip as an example of um, how these steps work for me. And hopefully, as I'm doing these videos, you're able to take the steps on your own and plan whatever trip it is that you want to go on. So the last few videos, let's see, we've gone over picking your destination, uh, figuring out your flights, your accommodations. Now, we're going to talk about how much it's going to cost you to actually be there. How much are you going to spend while you're in the country or the city that you're trying to visit? So while I was doing some research for these videos, I actually came across a website that I think is phenomenally helpful. And I wish I'd found it sooner in my travel adventures, um, but I will be using it going forward. It is called BudgetMyTrip.com. And what I really like about this site is that it will break down the average cost of a lot of common purchases and things that you need to concern yourself with in country but it also bases this on your spending habits too. So it has three tiers, you know, expensive, average, budget traveler. I'm looking at the budget traveler options because that just suits me a little bit better and I like being able to stretch every dollar that I can so that I can travel longer and to more places. If you're only doing one trip and this is your one thing that you're doing for the year and you don't mind spending the extra money for it, maybe look at the other tiers as far as cost in country goes. Now according to this site, a month in Thailand should cost me $703 approximately. That is counting um, accommodation as well as food and transportation around the country as well as an entrance to a lot of the touristy hotspots, uh, maybe a little bit of island hopping to explore some of those places while you're there. Everything is kind of listed out in front of you on this site, which is why I really like it, and I found it very useful for setting my budget. However, I'm going to budget above what they in it, what they said. So my initial thought, um, looking at prices per food and everything in the country, was that I would need an extra $800 on top of the $250 that I've already budgeted for my accommodations. And according to this, that is way more than I need. I will not need $800, but I would rather be safe than sorry, so I'm actually gonna up that even more. So I'm, I'm gonna say that I will need $1,000. And that $1,000 will cover my food expenses, um, any purchases I make in the country, like souvenirs, tours, um, plane rides to other cities, or bus rides, um, boat rides, any of these things that I might decide that I want to do while I'm there or visit or check out. It gives me some wiggle room and I will feel more comfortable having that extra buffer. However, you don't have to do that. You could go totally bare bones, take their number exactly as it is, and budget based on that. I don't advise that because I always think it's better to over budget than to under budget. Um, however, I will tell you, I came back from Europe with almost $1,500 under my budget. So you can take the number that they spit out at you um, based on how long you're going to stay in there and use that as a rough guide. You could use it as like exact. So if I were going with exactly $703 is my budget for the country, then I would only need to save up $1,676. Now, we're going to need to add a little bit more to that since I'm spending a week in England as well. I am going to up that amount that they spit out at me to about $2,100. That's what I'm going to say I need for this trip in total. It's about $2,100. And where I'm getting that number from is adding an extra $100 um, on to their estimated 703. So 800 was what I initially expected um, to be necessary. And then I'm adding another 200 onto that just to give me some, some buffer space. 
Um, so that adds up to $300 extra. And I'm just going to round it up to $2,000 and add another $100 on uh, to cover expenses while I'm in England, which I will probably tap into a lot of that buffer. So at this point, $2,100 for about five to six weeks of travel. So if you break that down into five weeks, it equals $420 a week. If you think about how much you might spend on a week-long vacation otherwise, it, it actually is a really great deal. However, because we're budget travelers, we want to get that number down even further. So I'm going to talk about a few ways that you can do that and how to limit your spending in country to keep it even lower. Because I know I'm not the only one who is a super budget traveler and thinks that every penny and every dime counts. And so you want to keep on top of these things. So one of the things that I use to get the cost of my trips down is free flights. And a lot of people in my life have asked me, well, how? How do you get a flight for free? Because, you know, they're, they're so expensive. And that is usually the biggest deterrent for people to travel because it's such a huge portion of the cost. And it's not very complicated, actually, to get a flight for free. It's simply knowing what to look for. Personally, I like using credit card rewards. And I'll tell you what I did for Europe. Um, and how this breakdown works worked well for me. So I signed up for the Capital One Venture One credit card, which gives you two miles for every dollar you spend, uh, but they also have a sign-on bonus of 40,000 miles, which is the equivalent of $400 towards flights. The only thing you have to do to get that bonus is spend $3,000 on your card in the first three months that you have it. That's not too hard, however, I am a frugal, budgeting, penny-pinching person, and so this was going to be totally impossible for me. There's no way that I would be able to do this. However, all I had to do was tell my family and friends what I was trying to do. You let them know, hey, if you have any big purchases coming up that you're maybe planning on paying for in cash, put it on my card, give me the cash. Um, and they know that this is, this is going to benefit you, and this is their way of supporting your big adventure and your dream trip and so most people have no problem with this because they love you and care about you and they want to be able to support um, the goals that you have in life. Never hurts to ask, throw a post up on Facebook, say hey anybody buying a new couch anytime soon that you're paying for in cash? You know, whatever, stuff like that. Even if it's simple things like you're with your friend and they want to fill their gas tank up, you, you say oh instead of giving the cashier 20 bucks let me put 20 on my card and you can just give me the 20. So little things like that actually add up and I was able to get to that $3,000. Because of the $3,000 spent I actually earned 6,000 miles on top of the 40,000 that I was then awarded from the company. So that's great. That's $460 towards flights. Awesome. Now over the course of um, the year or so that I had the card before my trip, I was able to continue building up those mileage points on there by putting basically everything I bought on my card. So I think by, by the time I was ready to book my flights on my trip, I had like 65,000 miles on my card to spend, I think, approximately. So that's great, because what ended up happening is that I only paid for two out of my six flights. That's amazing. And the thing to note as well though is that I actually could have gotten another one of those flights paid for with my miles. However, I had to change it. It was kind of last minute that I had to change it. So I lost out on that and I had to pay um, for the new ticket and the recovery fees and whatnot. So my mistake um, cost me a little bit, but if you are able to plan a little bit better than I did with that, um, you could even get to the point where you're only paying for one of those flights. Or none of them, uh, depending on what your flight cost is going to be overall. So a lot of airlines have credit cards, um, a lot of credit card companies offer rewards like this as a sign-on bonus because they want you to sign on. Now here's the thing that a lot of people in my generation seem to be really concerned about. Credit. So I find that a lot of people my age 
have this view of credit cards that they are just debt creators. Once you get a credit card, you're immediately in debt and you're trapped. That's not the case. Credit cards are a tool and it's up to you to have impulse control and, you know, not go out and buy things that you can't actually afford and also to pay your bill on time. You know, if you get a credit card with a $5,000 credit limit, that does not mean you have $5,000. That just means that if an expense comes up that you need to use that $5,000, they'll let you borrow it for a little while, but you still have to pay them back. So I grew up with, my dad is an accountant, and um, so credit has never scared me. In fact, I've always seen it as a useful tool um, that I can manipulate to suit what I need. So personally, right now, I have 21,000 miles on that credit card that I mentioned earlier, my Capital One card. That equals $210 towards travel. And so that, the miles I currently have would cover one of my flights, one of my three flights. So I can take $171 out of my budget for this trip because I got it covered already. I don't have to worry about it. That's fantastic. Um, if I really work at it, I could actually take out my flight from London to Thailand, which is $322, uh, if I really, really work at building up those miles. I could also apply for another card. So I was just looking, um, I think it was the Chase Sapphire Preferred card has a reward system that if you redeem it, directly through their travel agents, you can get up to $625 back towards travel. Even better, I'd be able to pay for two of my flights, no worries, and then use the mileage I already have to pay for the other one. Bam, my flights, gone. I don't have to worry about them, they're paid for. How cool is that? So I could actually chop my budget almost in half just by knowing how to do that. Whew, I feel like we covered quite a bit today. I think that'll be enough. I've given you quite a bit of homework, um, telling you now, you know, look into the costs in country, as well as looking into these um, travel credit card rewards if you want to bring your costs down a bit. Next week, I think what we'll cover is how to actually set up your budget um, towards this trip that you want to take, and what works best for me, and what might work best for you. So you have that to look forward to. Um, that'll be a breakdown of the numbers and how I organize all of my expenses to meet those goals. In the meantime, please let me know if you're using my steps to plan a trip. I want to hear all about it. If you have any questions, give me a shout. Um, I will get back to you as quickly as I can. You can follow along and reach out to me on all sorts of different social media platforms. All of the links are going to be below the video. If you haven't yet, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. Also, um, share my videos with friends and family, especially if you know someone that's going on a trip and you think that some of my tips um, might assist them in their planning process. As always, I really appreciate the support and the time you took out of your day to watch the videos that I'm putting out. Um, so, you guys are the best. I hope the rest of your day goes absolutely fantastic. I will see you next week. Ciao!